and they get real big. A lot of the old timers would call it Queen of the Meadow. Now, if you look in the books at Queen of the Meadow, that's going to be Joe Pieweed. So you got to be careful with common names, they'll, they'll mix you up sometimes. I know about 15 black snake roots. But, you know, Tommy Bass would talk about he's going to go pick some Queen of the Meadow for somebody. So you had to understand the context of what he was treating to know was he picking Joe Pieweed? Or was he picking this? Because this is really good for backaches due to the kidneys. It's also a eupatorium. Uh, so it's very good for virus infections too. But it's also good for backaches due to the kidney upset. Good for diabetes. And so he knew which queen of the matter he was talking about. But sometimes you have to get that in context. Because Joe Pieweed queen of the meadow is not used for backaches due to the kidneys or for diabetes. Got other uses. You can always identify this later too. Out in the sun, these will probably get more purple since this one's got more shade. I've never seen the bug, and this one's just starting it, but the big leaves will be full of holes like somebody shot it with a shotgun. And uh, it's a little key giveaway to it. Uh, the botanical name is Eupatorium serotinum. S E R O T I N U N. Its bloom is white. White. Has a nice smelling white bloom. Most of the bone sets do. Uh, Joe Pieweed, which they just moved into the Eutrochium family, though Eupatorium is synonymous with it, they can be white, pink, or purple, purplish, depending on the species. But all these other ones are white flowered. So they would also call it Queen of the Meadow because of the pretty white blooms that smell good. break bone fever makes the bones hurt your tendons and ligaments but it's also called thorough work it looks like the is going right through the thing just pick the leaf and chew it it's pretty good isn't it see my, 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 my students in my herb school they learn <laughs> 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 they get with a grain of salt yeah. yeah. <laughs> little on the bitter side isn't it however there's your bitter tonic so this is not and believe it or not said, this has more vitamin C in it than a lemon uh, Powerful. This is, if there's any medicine plant wise you should store for the winter time for cold, this is it. If you if you drink it as a hot, hot tea, it's a extremely powerful diaphoretic, makes you sweat it out. Cover up, you'll sweat rivers. If you make it as, so you don't give it to children or old folks. No, you go ahead. If you, of course, you got somebody that's 85 and ripping you going up and down, you know, they can do it. But uh, so it's a judgment call. If you wanted to use it for children or for somebody that can't take a diaphoretic, you do it as a cold tea. It takes a little longer, but then it works more slowly on the viral infection. The cold tea is a laxative, mild kidney medicine, and the roots are very laxative as a tea. Put it to work for fever cold? Hmm? Yes, yes. The leaves are the main part. You can use it cold, it just takes longer because the hot tea is working to kill the virus through the heat, diaphoresis, but it's also killing because of vitamin C and other chemicals in it. So it works faster. Of course, cold tea is not making you sweat, so it's it's a little bit less effective. So what about for the They could do that as a cold tea. The uh, make it as a syrup or honey. Really good. Or even for an adult.